Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Welcome back, Ram fans. This is Rams Up, your favorite L.A. Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at L.A. Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co-host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders. We're just longtime fans who love talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 347 of Rams Up. We do not have good news to report. Rams lose to the Lions 24-23 in their wild card game in Detroit. Great atmosphere, great game, just not a great result for our LA Rams. Had our chances, hung in there until the end but our offense couldn't close out drives in the red zone and our defense was not up to the task in the first half. Stepped up a bit in the second half, as did the Lions defense, but plenty of big plays for our Rams offense, just not enough TDs. And in the end, that told the story. Now, we did have some big play touchdowns. We seemed to be able to score from outside the 38 with no problem. We had a 50-yard Touchdown Stafford to Puka Nakua and then a 38-yarder from Stafford to Atwell. But other than that, just could not get it in the end zone. But I have to say, feel good for the Lions, their fans, and Jared Goff. If there is a team we're going to get knocked out by, it might as well be the Detroit Lions. And I might be pulling for them moving forward. Walk you through this game real quick, and we'll get to some notes and stats and some and some additional commentary. Lions' first drive was like the Rams' defense wasn't even out there, to be honest with you. They just marched right down the field. 10 plays, 75-yard drive. David Montgomery gets the honors for the touchdown. Rams come back with their own drive, 11 plays, 69 yards. Got helped out by a pass interference on third and one, and then a personal foul in the red zone, but then three straight passes from the six-yard line. Decided not to try to run it in, and in McVay's defense, this Lions run defense is pretty tough, but I thought they still might have given Kyron Williams one shot at it. So they settle for the field goal, and thankfully Brett Maurer hits it. That was one of our concerns, right? Lions second possession. They make short order of the Rams defense again. Five plays, 75 yards, and this time it's rookie Jameer Gibbs running it in. So they have two rushing touchdowns already. Rams' second possession starts out quite ominously. Stafford trips, dropping back on first down, and they're facing a second and 19, but he converts on third and 16 to Demarcus Robinson, and then on a third and one play. It's Puka Nakua for 50 yards up the sideline, and just like that, the Rams are back in this game, 14 to 10. Could have went sideways real quick after Stafford tripped, but... Lions, 11 plays, 75 yards, another touchdown to go up 21 to 10. This is the touchdown where Michael Hoyt was caught in coverage with Sam Laporta. That's a mismatch, but the Rams are able to answer with a touchdown, six plays, 75 yards. And I'm starting to think at this point, we're going to get the over for sure, and I would turn out to be wrong. These offenses settled down a little bit in the second half. After converting a 4th and 5 from the Detroit 44, Stafford hits 2-2 Atwell. Lions defensive back takes a gamble on it, tries to knock the ball away, and when he can't, Atwell has a free run to the end zone, a 38-yard touchdown, and we're still in the second quarter. It's 21-17 Lions. That was the scoring for the first half. Rams went 3-and-out on their first possession of the second half. 
Lions were able to answer with a field goal to take a seven-point lead. They're up 24-17. The Rams make another trip to the red zone, and once again, they're turned away. They have a first and 10 from the Detroit 11. Two passes, and the only run play, a uh, Puka Nakua sweep to the right side that actually lost two yards. After the field goal, it's 24-20. to Rams defense is starting to step up now. A three and out by the Lions. And the Rams drive into the red zone again. 13 plays, 79 yards. First and 10 from the Detroit 13. One run by Kyron Williams. A short pass to Ronnie Rivers for three yards. And then an incomplete pass. And they kick the 29-yarder. So it's 24-23. to Eight minutes left in the game now. And the Rams force a three and out. But they can't capitalize. Six plays, 48 yards. And they punt. They actually get to the Lions 34, facing a third and four. Pass is incomplete, but there's a holding penalty, and the Lions accept. And on third and 14, Stafford's pass to Nakua is incomplete. And this is the one where the Lions looked like they got away with a tug on Nakua. It could have easily been pass interference, which could have changed the whole game here. But they don't call it, and the Rams facing fourth and 14 from the Detroit 44 opt to punt. And the Lions are able to run out the clock. Rams defense can't get a final stop. And the Lions seal the win 24 to 23. Now we'll never know what might have happened if that sequence had gone a little bit differently at the end there. If Havenstein doesn't commit the hold. Do they let Brett Maurer attempt a 51 yarder? A potential game winner for Brett Maurer. That would have been a real turn of events for the Rams and their special teams. But would he have made it? And would the Lions have been able to drive the field anyways and get a game-winning field goal of their own? Or if they call that penalty, the hold, the tug on Nakua, which it really was a penalty. I'm not going to get into complaining about calls at how it really robbed our team. I don't think that was really the case. There's calls that they missed like that all game long. Would have been nice if we got it, but we didn't. But if they make that call, Rams very well could be heading to Tampa Bay or Philadelphia next week. But Hey, it is what it is. No more complaining about the calls from me. However, I will add that, according to Tom Quartz, the Rams are now 3-7 and seven when Craig Rolstad is the referee for their game. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'll share some team stats with you. The Rams actually had the ball 10 seconds more than the Lions. Pretty darn close. Pretty close as far as first downs as well. Lions 23, the Rams 22. Both teams were one for one on fourth down conversions. And thanks to those two big plays, the Rams actually had more yards per play, 7.7 to the Lions 6.1. Neither team eclipsed 100 yards rushing. Rams had 68, the Lions 79. Sure did seem like more than that for the Lions after watching that first half. But the Rams really locked it down in the second half pretty well. In fact, in the first half, the Lions were averaging 4.9 yards per carry. By the end of the game, it was 3.2, while the Rams' average actually ticked up. They were held to 3.1 in the first half, but finished at 4.0. So the Rams' rushing attack was actually more efficient. Our running backs just didn't get enough touches. Overall, the Rams outgained the Lions 425 total yards to 334. No turnovers in the game. And get this, the Rams had more return yards than the Lions. 24 return yards for our Los Angeles Rams, thanks to that one low kick that Austin Trammell decided to return. Although, that little juggle there late in the game, did that remind you of Oz Hakim in New Orleans? I think that was 2002, perhaps. Cost him a chance to rally and win that game, if I'm remembering it correctly. Player stats Stafford ended up with 367 yards passing, 10.2 yards per attempt. He was sacked twice. Kyron Williams, 13 rushes for 61 yards, a 4.7 average. So he ended up with a fairly productive day, just didn't get enough touches. He was really more productive in the second half for sure. And Puka Nakua, what a day. Nine catches for 181 yards in the TD That's a 20.1 average. An incredible day for Puka Nakua. Cooper Cup, a little quiet. Five catches for 27 yards. Demarcus Robinson, three for 44. 
Tutu Atwell had the one catch, but it was a big one, 38-yard touchdown. Davis Allen had two catches for 28 yards, and Tyler Higby, man, he took quite a shot to the knee, juggled the ball, took that low hit. Man, that looked really bad. Hopefully he's okay. On the Lions side, kind of typical numbers for Jared Goff. Very efficient, 22 for 27 for 277 yards, a 10.3 average in the one TD. Their leading rusher, Montgomery, 14 for 57 yards. But man, Jameer Gibbs, he only had eight carries for 25 yards. But he scares the daylights out of me when he has the ball in his hand. Guy is so elusive. And Amon St. Brown finished with seven catches for 110 yards. And our old friend Josh Reynolds, five catches for 80 yards. He was especially active early in the game. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Now, I wanted to talk about the four things that I identified would be key to the Rams securing a victory against the Lions. And then I'll talk about the fearsome four big plays. But I'm not really going to talk about the fearsome four big plays. Instead, I'm going to talk about four facets of this game. Not so much plays, just facets of the game where we failed and it cost us the game. Going into the game, I thought, number one, our secondary needs to hold up. And they did pretty well. Didn't get beat over the top. That was what I was most concerned about. They have some really good receivers, and they got that speedster, Jamison Williams. Two really good running backs that make the secondary susceptible to play action. But our secondary did a pretty good job. I mean, we gave up some yardage and gave up some key first downs, that's for sure. But overall, I can't really fault how our secondary played, especially considering the fact that Jordan Fuller was inactive Hey, you know, our secondary needs improvement. That's probably the one unit that we're going to have to focus on moving forward, looking ahead to 2024. Hey, we'll save that for another day. But overall, our secondary was not the issue in this game. The second thing we needed to do is make Goff uncomfortable. We did a little bit late in the game. He almost made that one big mistake, that panic pitch, if I can call it that, that almost turned into a giant turnover, but couldn't really create any pressure on him. And you know what? Shout out to the Lions offensive line. That's a really good unit. And the third thing we needed to do is have balance on offense. And in the second half, we started to get there, got Kyron involved more, but in the red zone, didn't get it done balance wise. And overall, I don't know, lead on the pass too much, I think. But at the same time, our pass game was getting it done, except in the red zone. And the fourth thing, and I guess I kind of got this wrong, I was really concerned about the kicking game. And that's the one thing they came through for us. Brett Maurer hits all three of his field goals, his two extra points. And I thought maybe we would just not go to the kicking game at all and go for it on fourth down. But those situations really didn't arise. Maybe we should have. Maybe we should have gone for it on fourth down in the red zone a couple of times. Maybe we should have gone for it late in the game when we punt it. Our kicking game was not an issue in this one. It was the fact that we leaned on it too much. So instead of talking about the four big plays, what were the four areas that really cost the Rams here? Well, the one obvious one is three red zone possessions that resulted in nine points. It's kind of a no-brainer. They talked about it all game long. Hey, on the other hand, we scored from 38 out and 50 out. So, you know, there is that too. Got to give a shout out to our offense for being able to strike long and fast and put points on the board. Just couldn't figure out the red zone part of it. The second thing is early in the game, there was some really poor tackling on our part. And that's something the Rams have not had an issue with really all year long. They've been a very, very good tackling team in this game, especially in the first half. Not so much. But you know what? There are some Lions ball carriers Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, Amon St. Brown, that are tough to bring down. So it's easier for us sitting in the living room to criticize the tackling of our guys, but it was obviously a little bit of a problem. 
and the third thing kind of leaning on the red zone thing again here. But the fact that our defense could hold that Lions offense to three points in the second half and we can only put up six points. Yeah, not good. Really disappointing performance by our offense. Moving the ball fairly well at times, but couldn't get it done. And the fourth thing I'm going to mention is how we use Michael Hoyt. Now, I'm not going to criticize Michael Hoyt. He's being put in a position and asked to do things that really aren't ideal for his skill set. And hey, he's the best guy they have, I guess, for some of those coverages and for some of those responsibilities. I mean, there was at least three plays where his inability to make the play really cost our team. So not Michael Hoyt's fault. He's doing the best he can. That guy plays his butt off. Maybe we need to scheme a little bit better and put him in a position to make plays or put someone else in a position to make plays that is better suited for those responsibilities. My prediction, by the way, was Rams 35, Lions 24. So I nailed half of it and the Rams did score five times. So if those five had been touchdowns with five extra points, I would have nailed it. I'm really not sure who I should be handing out kudos for in this game. I think our offensive line played very well, especially in pass blocking. The two sacks, Matthew Stafford tripping over his own feet, turf monster grabbing him, and the other one where he decided to tuck it and run and didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. The holes weren't there in the first half for Kyron Williams, but again, this is a really good run defense, a defense that focuses on stopping the run, and we got it going in the second half a little bit. I think you got to give a shout out to Ronnie Rivers. He came in after Kyron got banged up a couple of times and played well. And hey, hate to say it, got to give a shout out to Brett Maurer. No complaints here. Five for five on his kicks. I just wish we hadn't seen him so much, at least in the field goal aspect of it. And of course, Matthew Stafford and Puka Nakua. You got to hand it to both those guys. Stafford, the gunslinger, tough as nails, man. Shout out to him and Puka Nakua setting records every week, it seems like. Man, Puka Nakua, one of the top wide receivers in the National Football League with the ball in his hands. You know, I've been describing him to others as a fullback playing wide receiver. And Chris Collinsworth stole my line tonight. How about that? As far as the coaching goes, kind of a theme we've had all year with Sean McVay. Gets down there inside the 10. 12-yard line, 8-yard line, that type of thing. And he doesn't want to give Kyron shots sometimes. And Kyron has had a really good nose for the end zone. This is a different beast, though, against this run defense. So, hey, here I am once again, second-guessing Sean McVay's play calling. But that one run play to Puka, trying to sweep it to the short side of the field, went nowhere. Got to be a little bit more creative in the run game and be more creative with a guy named Kyron Williams. The only thing I'll say about this announcing crew, you know what? They're really good. Mike Tirico and Chris Collinsworth love their upbeat style. Really good announcers. Very balanced. Treat both teams equally. Certainly don't lean one way or the other. Very good at pumping up the atmosphere for a game like this as if it needed it because the atmosphere for this game was incredible. Loved it. Loved every minute of it, even though it was a Detroit thing going on. Hey, let them have their moment. I have no problem with that. My one criticism of Collinsworth is talking about the jet sweeps and the Rams getting away from it in this game. Not as big an element of this offense as in years past. And the other thing about the announcing crew that I didn't like with this game, and it's not necessarily on Tariqo and Collinsworth, but there were several occasions where players were really banged up and they didn't catch it. They didn't know what was going on. Puka, on that one red zone run, got rolled up upside down his neck in, a, in like an inverted somersault position. And you could tell he was banged up and hurt. And they didn't notice. And next thing you know, he was in the tent. Made perfect sense to me. And I was telling my special assistant via text, they must have called down and asked him to go to the tent to get checked out. And that's exactly what happened. And then when Kyron hurt his hand, I saw it immediately on that red zone run. One of his few red zone runs made a beeline 
for the sideline holding his arm or hand, and sure enough, he had a hand injury. And I wouldn't be surprised if Kyron Williams and Tyler Higby would have both been unavailable next week if the Rams had won this game. Final thoughts. Am I disappointed? Yeah, I'm very disappointed, especially when we consider that this was shaping up pretty well for the Rams. Green Bay wins. They'll be heading to Santa Clara to play the 49ers. The Rams would have been heading to Philadelphia or Tampa Bay, two places where I think they would might even be favored and could very well come away with a win. And then if Green Bay could have knocked off the 49ers, the Rams would have a home game at SoFi against Green Bay, or they head to San Francisco, take on the 49ers in Santa Clara with an opportunity to knock them out and go to the Super Bowl. But that said, when you consider where we were before this season started and how we felt about this team, man, it has been a nice run. It has been one of the most enjoyable seasons I've ever had being a Rams fan, and man, the future looks really bright. Got some issues to address, got some holes to fill, maybe some free agents to bring in. We got the money, though. Got to hit some draft picks, but we have a bunch of them again, a first round pick as well. If you know what those are, it's where you actually get to pick a player in the NFL draft in the first 32 picks. Yeah, we get one of those this year. How about that? Man, I just feel great about where this team is headed. And it has a lot to do with our last two drafts and the way this Rams staff has been able to coach these guys up and turn them into very, very good NFL football players in a very short time. So, yeah, it sucks. Rams are done for this year. But, man, it was a very, very good year and a lot of fun. Just really enjoyed it. Where do we go with the podcast, though? Well, we'll come back this week. Hopefully, we'll have a roundtable all of a Rams rehash. I'm going to talk about all the other playoff games and how horrible I've done on my picks so far. And I'll also revisit those 10 things I guaranteed you'd see in this game. Got the majority of them, but not all of them. So that's it for this episode. Hey, in a nutshell, Rams lose, but it's still a great time to be a Rams fan. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.